Hello class, today there's a lot to get off my chest. Specifically, we're talking about my chest. I have a pectus excavatum. It's a medical condition, not a Harry Potter spell. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, I don't know if you can tell, but my rib cage ended up caving inward because it inherited my personality. That's... <laughs> This condition, it develops during puberty, and so I didn't realize I had it until there's this swim unit in my high school gym class where we all have our shirts off, and kids just kept making fun of my weird chest until I told the doctor about it, and the doctor's like, yeah, they're right. <laughs> I just have to thank my bullies for their good work. <laughs> I'm Ben Miller, a scientist who's researched in half a dozen academic labs. I interned at BU, Northwestern, and then went to Columbia and got my degree. I even spent a year teaching on a science bus. But I gave it all up to pursue stand-up comedy. And now, I'm combining my passions into stand-up science. Pectus excavatum is a structural deformity of the sternum which has no known scientific cause. I mean, part of that is comforting, to hear that science doesn't know everything, but it's a little bit less comforting when one of those holes in science is also a big hole in your chest. The cross-section of my chest looks like a deflated balloon, which is fitting because I wasn't able to successfully inflate a balloon until my 18th birthday. You know, my wish would have been a normal chest if I'd never been able to blow out the candles. Pectus can affect your body in various ways, so upon diagnosis, usually a few tests are administered. Pectus can affect your heart and blood flow, so one test given is an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of your heart. Ultrasound works by bouncing sound waves off of something to create an image, like radar or echolocation. Before ultrasound devices, hospitals actually just had a team of bats yelling at you. A bit chaotic, but honestly it made for some good episodes of ER. Carl, get a blood gas. Pressure's crashing! What the hell is going on? It's sort of fitting though, because bats love caves and my chest is extremely caved in. Another test given is a lung function test to see how much the pectus is affecting your breathing. Which was a lot for me as a teenager, like, put my lips around the tube and the doctor said, like, blow, more, harder, you like that, don't you? But again, the test was just mascara running down my face. It was a lot. But I didn't need to get surgery for my pectus because it wasn't affecting my heart and I was at 70% of normal lung capacity, which is just barely a passing grade in breathing. I like to think of it as honorary asthma. It's not all bad though, sometimes I think it's sort of kinky. I mean 70% of normal lung capacity, it's like I'm choking myself a little bit all the time. If surgery is necessary, there are two procedures that are generally performed. The more modern procedure is called the NUS. It involves making two incisions on the side of the ribcage and sliding a metal bar behind that slowly pushes your sternum forward over the course of years. The older surgery is called the rabbit. It involves breaking every single one of your ribs and moving the bones forward. I know, it's a bit intense. It sounds less like a medical procedure and more like the lyrics to a metal song. Like, we shall break the cage of your chest and free your bones from the prison! Sorry, that was, uh, was a little bit intense for me to do. It's going from a uh, piece of metal in your chest to just pure metal song. Those are the range of pectus procedures. If you get the surgery though, there's a 5% chance that it can fall back in, which is terrifying. There isn't really any other surgery that works like that. Like if you get a heart transplant, there isn't a 5% chance you can just end up with your old heart again. There also exists a condition called pectus carinatum, where the ribcage protrudes outwards. Which makes sense, there has to be sort of like a yin to my yang, or a ya out to my ya in. Honestly, this condition sounds so cool to me, you always have like a puffed out chest, and you can be constantly asserting dominance, which is something I'm told that I never do. They're always like, Ben, you need to be more dominant. I'm like, okay, I'll listen to whatever you say. But maybe this is sort of a grass is greener sort of situation, because the other type of pectus also somehow affects your breathing. You'd think like, more room in your chest, taking big breaths, being a big old chested guy, but it also affects your breathing and sometimes needs to be corrected. I guess, you know, too much chest, too little chest, you want something that's chest right. My pectus genuinely hasn't impacted my life in any way, but sometimes people are a bit weird about it. Uh, I feel like sometimes when people find out about my chest, they're like way too supportive. Like, oh man, you're perfect just the way you are, which, no I'm not. <laughs> like, if you ordered ribs at a restaurant and then you got my ribs, you would send them back. <laughs> 
One time my mom was like, hey Ben, is the reason why you don't take your shirt off at the beach? Because you're worried women will see your chest, and then they'll be disgusted, and then they won't want to sleep with you, and then you'll die alone because you're perfect just the way you are. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening, class. I hope you learned something today. As always, my sources are in the description, and feel free to leave a comment, unless you're one of those regular chested normies. Get out of here, regular chested people. This ain't no place for you. Yeah, that's right, now I'm bullying everyone that doesn't have pectus. That's a healthy way to deal with my childhood traumas. Yeah.